Let me ask you something and I'll try not to be cheesy asking the question. If you knew of some ways that you could save some money as a new homeowner, would you want to know about them? All right then, let's take a look at 19 things that you can do this weekend that's gonna add some green to your pocket. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent where you live or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, let's take a closer look at those 19 things that you can do. You can add these to a list to do this weekend or maybe take them over the course of the next few months. Either way, you'll start saving money as soon as you do them. The first thing you want to do is take a look at your attic insulation. Now, you might recall whenever you bought your house, you had a home inspection report. Your home inspector likely went up into the crawl spaces and likely checked out the attic. If they noted anything about attic insulation being disrupted or not having enough attic insulation in certain areas of your house, then you might want to go back and add that insulation now. Now, if you didn't have that in your home inspection report, simply go up into your attic, take a look, take a flashlight and investigate and see if there's any areas that look like they're lower in insulation than others. And if you find any areas completely missing insulation, it's time to add some more insulation to your attic. Doing so will help you keep your temperature regulated in your house a lot better. To better help you out with this, I'm going to put a link in the show more description below to the Department of Energy about attic insulation. With that, you'll know exactly how much insulation should be in your house depending on where you live. The second thing you can do is cool down the water heater. Now you might be wondering, well, what do you mean by cooling down the water heater, Andrew? I kind of like my steamy hot showers. I like playing with my rubber duck in the bath. Here's the thing when it comes to a water heater. The optimal settings on it is 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 55 degrees Celsius. If you have your water heater set anything higher than that, it takes a lot of energy to keep that water hot. Think about all the time that you're not using the hot water. Your water heater is still circulating that water and keeping it hot. The hotter that you have that temperature set to, the more energy consumption you're going to have. The really quick thing to do here is simply take a look, go out to your garage, go out to wherever you have that water heater. Right now, it's very simple. Just take this video with you as I'm talking and take a look at it. If you see that setting is higher than 120 degrees, go and knock it back a little bit. It'll save you some money and you won't even notice it the next time you take a shower. By the way, if you go over 120 degrees, it can scald your skin and it can hurt young kids as well. Please make sure that you're not only safe about this, but save some money in the process. The third thing is the water heater gets cold too. Remember a moment ago when we are talking about all the times that you're not taking a shower or taking a bath and how your water heater just keeps on working, keeping that water nice and hot for when you're ready for it? Here's the thing. The reason that it's recirculating and keeping that water so warm is because it's always losing the temperature of the water. The best way to try to conserve on the energy bill here is to simply get a heater blanket. There's a specially adapted insulator that goes around your water heater. Doing so will help it retain more of the temperature and it can add some money to your bank account by simply saving some money on your monthly utility bill. The fourth thing that you can do is install ceiling fans in most of the rooms. Have you ever wondered whenever your HVAC system is working how it exactly gets your home to a climate that you like? That it actually gets the temperature in your house just right to exactly where you want it. It's coming out of the air vents. And when it's coming out of the air vents, it has to keep pushing that air throughout the house. So the more that it has to push the air throughout the house, the more the unit has to work itself. An easy thing to do to help out your HVAC system is to simply install ceiling fans in most of the rooms. Leave it on a low setting and it'll help your HVAC system circulate that air. As it does that, it'll help keep your HVAC system from coming on as much. And we both know that HVAC system costs a lot of money to run. So let's help it out and save you some money in the process. The fifth thing that you can do is insulate exposed water pipes. Now, if you're in a colder state as it were, you're probably already accustomed to making sure that the water pipes are insulated and protected before the winter freeze occurs. Now, it doesn't always occur to the rest of us around the country and the warmer states to adopt this practice too. Here's the thing, it's gonna benefit you no matter where you live in the country. This is because the water that's going through your pipes are very hot. Again, your water heater is producing water at 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius. When you you consider all that hot water going through your pipes at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. How frequently do you have 120 degree weather where you live? Think about that for a moment. So by simply insulating those water pipes, you can help it keep the hot water where it belongs, which is flowing to your faucet, flowing to your shower, flowing to your tub. Let's help you save some money by simply wrapping the pipes. The sixth thing that you can do is get a programmable thermostat and learn how to use it. A programmable thermostat works exceptionally well for those of us that have a routine. What that means is that we 
can program our thermostat so that in the summer months we let it go up another four to six degrees during the day when no one's going to be home and at the same time during the winter we let the temperature drop another four to six degrees and then we can program it so that it comes back on about one to two hours before we get home to get the temperature right where we want it to be doing so will help you save on your energy costs and also be good for the environment while adding money to your bank account the seventh thing that you can do is replace your air filters let me ask you and please be honest when was the last time that you changed your air filters are you on a monthly or a quarterly schedule to replace them air filters are to an hvac system what our lungs are to us as people obviously the cleaner that our lungs are the easier that we can breathe so is true with your hvac system they're the lungs of your hvac system getting into a healthy habit of changing those out once a month or quarterly depending on the type of hvac system that you have and the type of air filters that you're choosing to install will go a long way to your hvac health and keeping it running smoothly helping it keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter the eighth thing that you can do is clean the air vents in your house when we're talking about cleaning the air vents in your house what we specifically want to be looking for are any obstructions any dust bunnies that might be hanging out there you know those little things that are all over the house you catch them behind the couch you catch them on the corners of your house they're annoying they're obnoxious and your allergies hate them. So cleaning out your air vents will actually be a really good thing in keeping your allergies in check as it also keeps money in your bank account. The ninth thing that you can do are marking cracks in the basement. Now obviously this pertains to you if you have a basement. So what you want to do is you want to go into your basement. Why not take this video with you down into the basement now and take a look for any cracks that might be in the walls or in the foundation of the basement itself. What you want to do is get a roll of masking tape right down today's date, put it on one side of the crack and put it on the other side of the crack. What we're going to do is come back in about three months to six months and see if that crack is getting bigger. If the crack is getting bigger, it's going to be an indicator to you that it will be extremely prudent to call a specialist out to get that remedied before it becomes a major issue to the foundation of your house. Taking a preventative step like that up front with home maintenance will save you a lot of money by handling it now as opposed to having a major issue happen in the future. The tenth thing is give your clothes dryer a break. Now when we're talking about giving your clothes dryer a break, it's very simple just to hang up the clothes when you're done washing them, spritz them with some Febreze or whatever your favorite scents are and let them air dry. Now, better yet is in the summer months. Why not put them outside on a clothesline if you have one? And here's one of the interesting observations about this. How much money do you spend on that spring fresh smell or some kind of fresh scent going into your clothes when you put it in the clothes dryer? I don't know about you, but I probably spend something like $200 a year on those clothes dryer smelly goods so that my clothes smell like they could if I just hung them outside. It's kind of funny when we think about it all the same. Consider hanging up your clothes outside or inside the next time you're getting ready to put something into the clothes dryer. Doing so is going to help you save some money. The 11th thing you can do is check your plumbing, specifically around your toilet, your faucets, and the under the sink piping. What we're looking for here are any drips or any leaks. Cutting that off at the pass and putting a dam in place keeps it from leaking out water and causing damage to your house. Now, one of those things that are kind of common in a lot of people's homes of that slow running of water into the toilet or that slow drip from the faucet. What happens is that over the course of a month that equates to gallons or even hundreds of gallons. In the process, it's just flushing water and flushing money right down the drain. Why not take a closer look at it and ensure that you have no leaky pipes in your house? So let's put a stop to those leaks in the house and while we're at it, will stop money leaving your account. The 12th thing that you can do is install energy efficient light bulbs like a CFL bulb or an LED bulb. Now these require a little bit of an upfront investment. So consider the rooms that you keep lit up the most and adding them in those areas first. Doing so is gonna help you save some money. And by the way, even though it is a bit of an upfront investment, the prices of these light bulbs are going down as they get more and more efficient as they become more and more common. Take a look at it the next time you're at the home store and consider which light bulb is right for you. For reference, LEDs normally have really good performance Performance. Let's help you illuminate your house while brightening your financial future. The 13th thing that you can do is install energy rated appliances. Now, installing energy rated appliances will help you save a lot of money with your monthly utility bills because they're much, much more efficient. If you don't have them already, sure, it's going to cost a little bit of money up front, but just consider the savings that you're going to have on your monthly electric bills and gas bills moving forward into the future. And consider the fact that if you still have that refrigerator that's going to go out in 8 to 10 years and it's just guzzling and sucking down electricity, electricity, what good is that doing for you? Opposed to breaking down and getting the Energy Star appliances now that might last somewhere between 15 and 20 years. You're going to have it longer and it's going to save you money 
faster. The 14th thing that you can do is install smart strips for your home electronics. You know those little bitty light bulbs that you always see? Those are kind of annoying and it's on all televisions, it's on all smart devices, it's on everything. It may be a shock that those little blinky lights actually cost a lot of money to blink every few seconds over the course of a year. In addition to being highly annoying when you're trying to go to sleep and you keep getting hit with this little green or red or blue or whatever color light, right? Why not go ahead and get yourself a smart strip and flip that switch off at night it'll save you money because it's not using electricity think about it and help you doze off tonight the 15th thing that you can do are plant shade trees near your house when we're talking about planting a specific type of tree consider a deciduous tree if you're wondering what a deciduous tree is that's that kind of tree that has the leaves that fall in the winter and the leaves that come on during the summer consider what we just talked about there so if you have leaves in the summer and it's blocking out the sunny areas of getting that light into your house it's reducing the sun's rays coming in as it's doing that is helping your HVAC be more efficient by helping your house cool down through a natural method and it's also beautiful with a deciduous tree. At the same time, whenever the winter comes, the leaves drop. It starts helping that sunlight come in your house to heat up your house, which increases the efficiency of your HVAC system. It's not only good for the environment, it's good for you. The 16th thing that you can do is change the locks on your house. Now you might be wondering yourself, Andrew, how does changing the locks on my house save me money in the long term? Have you ever wondered how many people have the keys to the house that you live in now it can be a little bit disturbing and a little bit unsettling unless you have already changed the locks on your house you're denying access to your house by anyone that might have potentially had the key whether it was a maid a landscaper a workman or just friends and family of the previous owners you can have peace of mind of knowing that you did one more thing to securing your house it's far better than being burglarized the 17th thing that you can do is seal your home airtight when we're talking about sealing your home airtight this is what we want you to do take this phone take this video walk around your house and go look at any areas that you can feel a cool or hot breeze depending on the season now common areas here are the windows and it's also around the doors if you feel that breeze coming in then what you want to do is hop in the car and drive over to the home store and get some weather stripping bring it back to your house and add the weather stripping where you felt the drops around the windows and the doors and it'll help keep the temperature inside as opposed to heating and cooling mother nature I think that she does a pretty good job herself what do you think the next place that you want to look for a draft or around a electrical outlets and cracks in your house. Cracks are pretty easy to fix in your home with some caulk and just painting right over the caulk that you put into the crack. With electrical outlets, that can be a little bit trickier. So what you want to do is put your hand over it, not into the socket, but over it and feel for a draft. And if you feel a draft coming into your home, then you want to go back to the home store and ask them, what can you do to further insulate the electrical receptacles in your home? Doing so will help keep your climate that you want inside your house from getting outside your house. In the process, keeping your money inside your bank account and putting less of it outside of your bank. The 18th thing that you can do are explore your tax benefits and other incentives for energy efficient upgrades in your area. What you can do is simply go on the Google and quickly type in what are the tax savings for homeowners in Las Vegas, Nevada for energy efficient upgrades. I know it's a long tail keyword, but here's the deal. That long tail keyword will also produce a wide variety of results for you that inform you about the options that might be available for you or the tax benefits that you might be able to get or incentivize programs for making your home more energy efficient. Doing so is not only good for the environment, it's good for you. The 19th thing that you can do is create a home maintenance checklist. This becomes very important to have one for each season. And it's also a good idea to do your home maintenance once a quarter. Getting into the habit of maintaining your home now is like us going to the doctor every single year for a physical checkup. Any preventative medicine that can hedge off of the past when something's easy to address is far better than letting our health go and now we're in the hospital bed trying to get better. So is true of your house. Cutting it off with preventative Preventative medicine will save you a lot of money in the future as opposed to having a disaster on your hands. You can get to it when it's just a small, easy to fix issue. Okay, so now that you know 19 things that you can do right now to make your home more energy efficient and also make your bank account more efficient, now let's take a closer look at the seven costs to maintain the average home and the wisdom of setting up a homeowner's journal if you haven't already done so. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.